George Johnson Stoney is most famous for one thing. Besides that, in 1874 he proposed a new universal measuring system based on nature itself. The speed of light in a vacuum, electric charge and the gravitational constant are universal. Stoney proposed that measurement units in physics should be based on these rather than meters, for example, which were based on the distance from Earth's North Pole to the equator. Almost 30 years later, Max Planck produced his own universal constants, identical to Stoney's, except Planck replaced the electric charge with his own quantum of action. The effect of this was relatively small, Stoney's units and Planck's differ by a factor of root 137, related to the fine structure constant. One unit of Planck mass is small, about 20 micrograms. You'd need about 800 Planck masses to balance a housefly. Planck obtained this mass by manipulating his preferred universal natural constants, C, H-bar and G. He arranged the constants that yield the Planck mass in precisely this way because this expression has units of mass. So keep an eye on the units as we calculate the Planck mass. We begin with Planck's formula and the units of the constants. We put in the values of the constants. A little algebra simplifies the units. Punching numbers into a calculator gives us the next line. The units look a little less tidy now because we've written joules in the SI base units, which will allow us to simplify the next line. Square rooting gives a result in kilograms. Expressed in grams, we get the Planck mass as it's usually written. It's worth reminding ourselves of how we ended up with this thing we call the Planck mass. We derive the Planck mass from the universal natural constants C, H-bar and G. As a result, we hope to have found a mass that is in some way fundamental to the universe. Planck didn't stop at mass. By further manipulation of the natural constants, he obtained expressions for the Planck length and Planck time. One unit of Planck length is about 10 to the negative 33 centimeters. The Planck length measures an almost shockingly small scale. The Planck length is to a proton as a hydrogen atom is to a star. If the Planck length seems shockingly small, the Planck time is outrageous. One unit of Planck time is about 5 times 10 to the negative 44 seconds. It's the time light takes to travel the Planck length. In 1971, Stephen Hawking showed the Planck scale determines precisely the properties of the smallest possible black hole, a quantum black hole. A quantum black hole is a strange object governed by unresolved rules and with properties that nobody can predict with any certainty. The mass that forms even the most massive black holes has no size, not even a Planck length. A black hole's entire mass is crushed utterly by gravity to make a singularity, a geometrical point with infinite density. We can't see the singularity because its intense gravitational field traps light as far out as the event horizon. If Earth were crushed to form a black hole, the radius of its event horizon would be a little less than one centimeter. The Sun's event horizon radius would be about three kilometers. In 1972, Jacob Bekenstein calculated the effect of adding one bit of information to a black hole, any black hole of any size. The result was astonishing. He discovered that when a black hole takes in a single elementary particle containing one bit of information, the area of the event horizon increases by one square Planck length. Bekenstein's work was a remarkable vindication of George Johnson Stoney's idea a hundred years earlier, confirming that a universal scale measures something rather profound. The fact that the Planck area is related to the bit suggests a deep link between the structure of black holes, the universe and information. 